Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. God is good. So today our reading will come from the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. So if you are there, say amen. Amen. So I'll read. Then I looked up, and there before me were four horns. I asked the angel who was speaking to me, What are these? He answered me, These are the horns that scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. I asked, What are these coming to do? He answered, These are the horns that scattered Judah, so that no one could raise their head. But the craftsmen have come to testify them and throw down these horns of the nations who, who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter its people. And that's the word of God. Amen. Let's appreciate Elvis. Hey, praise the Lord. Amen. I, I can feel the energy here. I can feel it. I can feel the level of expectation that you all have. How many of you are waiting on the Lord? Waiting on the Lord. You know, Victor, you asked a very critical question. How many of us have received a certificate uh, for being the toughest soldiers this year? I know some of you have weathered storms, gone through battles, but isn't it amazing that you are still here? Amen. You are still here. And the same God that was is the same God that is. Amen. And if he took us through 2023 by God's grace and his mercy, he will take us through 2024. Amen. So I want us to worship, and I'm glad even that the band is not here. I want this to be for you. Let's sing this song that says, It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Repeat that with me, say. It's not by might. Raise your hands. It's not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. In case you're wondering what we're saying, pray that again. It's not by might. It's not by power, but by my spirit. Say, now lift up your hands and let us declare. Every mountain, every mountain shall be removed. Every mountain shall be removed. Every mountain, say Yeah, by my spirit, says the Lord. Give him a big round of applause and we all say amen and amen. You can have your seats. You can have your seats. Well, I just want to welcome all of you here for our last Sunday of 2023. And remember, we are still navigating, you know, through the book of uh, Zechariah. And we're going to land at Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 where the Lord says what we've just prayed and sung. That it is not by might or by power but by my spirit, says the Lord. So remember over the last few uh, Sundays that have passed, we have been gliding through these chapters and we are still in chapter 1. So that we can understand the context upon which the Lord was saying this. And we understand that these were the people who were broken, discouraged, defeated. They, they, were, they were low in terms of morale. They had no motivation whatsoever. They had a task to perform, to build the work of the house of God and to do his work. But they were facing opposition. Somebody say facing opposition. And this is the reason as to why they were defeated. And they threw down their tools and they said, ah, let it go. But then the Lord sent prophets like Haggai. And we see here Zechariah prophesying by his side to remind the people of God that yes, you will do this work. Haggai is saying, let us build the physical house of the Lord. And Zechariah is saying, but remember to rebuild the inner house, the spirit man, so that your relationship with the Lord can be restored. So we talked about regaining your spiritual heritage. 
Remember that the Lord was extremely angry with the ancestors of these people. Because of their disobedience, they were reaping the consequences of disobedience. And God sent a word and he said to them, return to me and I will return to you. Now you know God is a promise keeper. When he says to you, return to me and I will return to you, he means it. He, he will keep his promise. And this is why we saw it happen in the first vision of the man in the martyr trees where the Lord began to speak to this person and he said to him, I am now coming back to my people. I am jealous for them. I am passionate about them and I will bless them. I will restore them. I will rebuild them and I will return to them with overflowing prosperity. Somebody say overflow. Why don't you just, just overflow yourself, overflow your neighbor, overflow your future and declare that word for yourself. Amen. So now we are going into another strange territory here and this is the second vision. And this is a vision that he receives as he looks up to the Lord, a vision of four horns and four craftsmen or smiths or carpenters or skilled workers. So I want to read it again so that we can understand. It says in Zechariah 1 and verse 18 to 21, it says, Then I looked up and there before me were four horns. I asked the angel who was speaking to me and I asked, what are these? He answered me and he said, these horns these are the horns that scatter Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. These are horns that he was seeing. Now the Lord is showing him craftsmen or carpenters or, or smiths. And I asked, he said, what are these coming to do? He answered, he answered, and he said, these are the horns that scatter Judah so that no one could raise their head. But craftsmen have come to terrify them and throw down these horns of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah to scatter its people. Somebody say, devil, there's something coming at you. My Lord is against you. Because this battle is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. Give him a big round of applause. Amen. I want you to remember critically here that what the Lord told these people, is I take responsibility for your punishment. I take responsibility. This was not the work of the devil. I take personal ownership over the 70 years of the exile that you have experienced. And I want to tell you guys, sometimes, and I want to repeat sometimes, the, the stress and struggles and difficulty and opposition that you're facing is not always from the devil, but from the Lord. Because we remember that he's a jealous God and he says, I will do anything to get your attention, to get you right. Amen. So I just want to make sense of this because the Lord was saying, these people that I handed over to you to defeat you and take over you and send you to exile and dominate you have gone overboard. And so God was angry that they took it too far. You know, it's, you remember at that point when, when Job was living here on earth and a meeting was happening in heaven, there was a board meeting in heaven and the devil asked for permission from God to come and torment his servant. And he said, okay, go ahead, but do not, meaning God always puts a limit to what you can go through. And I want to remind you here today, you might be going through hell and high waters, but there's a limit as to what the devil can do to you. Why? Because you belong to the Most High God. Amen. The devil does not have a free reign on your life. So God is saying, they went too far, and now I'm angry at them. And so this is another vision to depict. So let us try and understand this vision. We are seeing horns and craftsmen. Horns symbolically represent powers authorities, rulers over territories. We can see this in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 24 where it says, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall rise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. So even from the book of Daniel to the book of Revelation, even as the Bible talks about the Jesus Christ being the horn of our salvation, it means he is the strength of our salvation. Amen. So here we are referencing horns and, and I know when you look at your life you can see horns. Amen. Somebody say kufinyo. There are certain things this year or probably even the years behind that that have been dominating your life that have been blocking your life, that have been limiting your life, 
overburdening you, hindering you. They have presented a sense of opposition in your life. You want to move forward, but you're always hitting a wall. Somebody say horns. Historically, these powers probably symbolize the Assyrian army, the Babylonians, the Persians, and the Greece that we can read and see that came and dominated the people of God. But I want to remind you that this had been said because God's blessings were conditional. Some things are conditional, church. When you read Deuteronomy 28 and verse 25, or the whole of Deuteronomy 28, you can see a list of 10 blessings for obedience and 40 curses for disobedience. I, I just want you to read that for yourself and you'll see the sad state of how God is saying he will curse his people. For example, he says, if you disobey me, you will plant, but you will not reap. And even if you have land, people, foreigners will come to that land and they will dominate. They will reap the best from your land and yet you'll receive nothing. These are just examples of the kinds of oppression that these people are going through. That there are people who would influence, or here in Kenya we talk about a system, we talk about uh, uh, the deep state, we talk about cartels, we talk about gangs, we talk about all these things, things or principalities or powers that have power to limit your ability to thrive. This is why in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 25, it says, the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. This is one of those curses. You will come at them from one direction, but flee in them in seven. And you will become a thing of horror to all the kingdoms in the earth. And as you can see, Jesus here is proving a point through this vision to say, yes, I gave these people power over you. Look at what it said in Deuteronomy 45 and uh, 46 of chapter 28. It says, all these curses will come on you. They will pursue you and overtake you until you are what? Destroyed. Because you did not obey the Lord your God. And observe the commands and the decrees that he gave you. And he said there will be a sign. Somebody say a sign. And a wonder to you and your descendants forever. Now let me go back to that word a sign. Because sometimes you're going through stuff but you're struggling and, and unaware and clueless of the fact that what you're going through is a sign that should point you to the reason why you are in that predicament. It's like God is whispering, saying, hello, can't you see you're struggling because of this? You're struggling because of your disobedience. And remember here when we talked about a spiritual heritage, God was giving them physical land, but he wanted their minds to be transformed so that even when they come back to that land, they have the frame of mind to continue to occupy and make that land fruitful. It's one thing to receive an inheritance from the Lord and it's quite another to have the software, the right mind, the right heart so that you can multiply your inheritance and make the best of it. Amen. That's the whole point. God has no problem blessing you. The problem is whether you'll be able to sustain it. Whether you'll be able to make use of it. God gives talents. The problem is whether we can harness those talents. So now let's go now to the craftsmen. They're called craftsmen. The word I want you to pick here is crafty. <laughs> and I want you to know something about this God that we serve. He's way above our leak. Amen. He does things that sometimes even the devil is just wide mouthed open, tongue tied. He can't even, he can't see where God came from and where he went through and how he got victory through his own. You know, the devil thinks he's winning, but, the, but our God is giving us victory even in the battle that the devil is thinking that he's winning. I want to give you an example of how, and I want to use this word carefully, how God can be crafty. Remember Moses, the baby. He is supposed to be the deliverer of the people of Israel, right? And God decides that he will be sheltered and groomed in the house of the enemy. <laughs> Pharaoh is there thinking he's calling the shots. Go out there and kill all those babies, murder them because I'm in control, I'm in charge. But God is causing your own beautiful sweet daughter. <laughs> you are actually, God made him pay the bills to raise Moses who would end up, somebody say we serve a big God, amen. He's above, the, he, he is above, somebody say he's above. 
Even when, when, when Herod wanted to, to, to corrupt the people that were going to see Jesus and he said, go and come back and tell me so that I can. No, no, no. When they went there, whatever they saw there was way beyond God's. Way beyond what the devil could do. And they said, we know he's powerful. We know he has influence, but we are not going back there. Because whatever God starts, he will finish. The devil cannot thwart God's plans for you. Amen. He's a faithful God. So God is sending carpenters, people who know how to align, people who know how to design. He's sending smiths and workmen to work for these people. Why? To bring down these powers that have been dominating over these people. So sometimes, you know, when you look at God, it's, it's like when you look at his sovereignty and, and it's, it's like he has a table of chess. And the devil thinks he's advancing but he has no idea that it is God who is in control. Amen. And I came to give you this news before you cross over to 2024 that we serve a sovereign God. You are not in control of your life, in control of your destiny. You are not running the show. The one who's running the show loves you and he's jealous for you and he will make a way for you where there seems to be no way because he's a God. When he says it will happen, it will happen. Amen. Now let's look at these people, because these this craftsmen are skilled, knowledgeable, strategic, gifted, and efficient workers. I want you to imagine the kind of people that bring down nations. We're talking about nations that govern themselves, but yet you have people who work in other nations who can craft strategies to bring down nations. You never see them, you never hear them, but they're within you and they're making your economy crumble. They're making your, your political scene unbearable just so that they can have an advantage over you. Somebody say crafty. Somebody say strategic. And I want to tell you the thing that God is about to release on your opponents is going to be strategic, is going to be crafty. Somebody say amen. Don't you understand that we serve the kind of God who ensures you go to the lion's den because he knows he will sustain you in the midst of the lions so that the next day he can overturn the spiritual destiny of an entire nation. So don't you cry now that you're in the lion's den. Understand that God has a plan that is over and above what you can fathom. He is God. Hallelujah. You see, an example is in Isaiah 54 and from verse 15 to 17. It says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have crafted the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy it. So God here is showing us that he, he, he has tools and he has people who know how to use those tools. Amen. And, he's going to, and this is where we find the verse that says, Therefore no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And every tongue that the that rises up against you, the Lord is able to condemn. Amen. Amen. So God is saying this to these people in the book of Isaiah, that whatever you're going through, I am in control. I can see what you cannot see. So today I want to talk about the subject of facing opposition. I want you to give your, your neighbor a, a straight farm look and tell them facing opposition. We are not talking about falling in the midst of opposition or struggling in the midst of opposition or suffering through opposition. We are talking about giving a firm face to opposition. Somebody say, come, baby, come. By the grace of God, somebody say, come, baby, come. Because this battle is the Lord's. Amen. You're not in the ring with me. You're in the ring with the most high God. Hallelujah. So opposition, I don't need to define it because you can feel it. Maybe throughout this year you've been trying to launch a business, but you can feel it. You've been trying to put your marriage straight, but you can feel it. You're trying to raise your children right, but you can feel it. You're trying to grow yourself and advance yourself, launch things, ideas, but every time you move forward, you feel like there's, a, you can, somebody say you can feel it. There's opposition. And you know this opposition has both disadvantages 
and advantages. And I want to talk a little bit about the disadvantages of discouragement. And here probably you're going to see yourself. Because whenever you go through constant opposition, you face a lot of discouragement. Because you're tired. You're moving something that is not moving. You're doing something that is not working. You, you, you feel delayed. You feel like you have stagnated. And as a result, you, you begin to self-doubt. If, if I'm to be honest here, a number of you, if I ask how many of you have doubted yourself this year and your ability to do something, many hands will probably go up because you are wondering, am I the problem? You feel like there was wasted resource. You took a loan. You ventured out. You got yourself in deals. You went and you said, I'm going to do that. And now you're looking at your opportunities crumbling to the ground. And these dreams that were are now shattered. And you feel like, I wish I knew I would not have invested my time, my energy, my resources in that which was dead on arrival. You feel emotionally distressed. There's relational stress. And you know it more than anybody else. These kinds of opposition can cause marriages to fall apart. Because you have a vision, you want to launch a business, you go, you take a loan on your land or a mortgage on your house, and then you say, we are going to do this. And by the time you hit the third month, it falls apart, and somebody says, I knew it. I knew you should not have done it. I wish you had listened to me. And many of us are facing such kinds of stress, emotional, relational, to the point where it's even affecting your blood pressure. You're facing high levels of uncertainty. You can't even plan because you're wondering, if I, if I walked into 2023 knowing that God was here, and now I'm looking at myself, and as I call him saying, hello, 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 hello. God, where are you? You, you. And you're feeling alone, forgotten, and abandoned. Yet in the beginning, you knew this was it. It dampens your ability to dream again. And probably there are people sitting here today who are just tired. Probably as some of us were shouting, we know, I don't care. Because you've tried and nothing has worked. And as a result, you're in that place of reduced productivity. This is where the people of Israel were. They had a building to build. They had a nation to rebuild. But they were just there. Because every time they try something, they're told, Auna license, Auna hi, ujafanya hi. And they were just tired and a word of God came to them to tell them now is the time to build. How? Where? We don't have the resources. No. Don't look at what you can do. Look at what God can do. But now let's talk about the advantages. Somebody said the advantages. You know there's nothing that reveals your weaknesses more than opposition. Right? Opposition is a good thing because it shows you where you are weak. It exposes you. It helps you do a personal audit. Even before you cross over, some of us need to sit down, pen down our weaknesses, and do a personal SWOT analysis of our own lives. And some of the things that will reveal this to you is not glory and promotion, but trials and opposition. Because from there you can say, I have a high temper, I'm irrational, I'm like this, I'm like that. You know because you have seen yourself in your worst element. It also reveals your enemies. Somebody say amen. Sema naombea du yangu. Ewa waombeni. Sema naombea du yangu. Because there's nothing that reveals your enemies like opposition. And it's always awesome when you're fighting an enemy you can see. An enemy you know. Because whenever you're fighting an enemy you cannot see, then you cannot fashion a strategy to defeat him because you do not know. It's like you're fighting a, a cold war. But whenever you're facing opposition, most likely the chance is you're going to identify what is bringing opposition in your life. I'm sure some of you know who your real friends are. Say many hallelujah. You know, I had a radio show of cutting people off in 2023 and that, that show was on fire. Because I'm sure even in this church we have people who are ready to cut people off. Mm, the day I needed you, never cut off. These guys, time wasters, cut them off. Blue ticking, cut off. Am I saying the truth? So how many of you know who your enemies are? Just lift up. I know we are in church. Just lift up your hands. It's okay to admit in love. Yes? It reveals your enemies, your true friends, those who you think. 
but it also builds resilience. Amen. Nothing builds resilience more than opposition. I remember sharing an illustration a while ago in this church of a young man who went to his dad and he said, Dad, I want to be strong. Yeah, I want to be strong. Like Ben was saying, ah, I want to look at my muscles and I say, hmm, look at those guns. God, I want to be my, I want to be strong. Give me something to do. And his father said, okay, son, go outside there. You see that big boulder? I want you to move that big boulder. He said, ah, easy peasy. Like Chinese squeezy. And he went there and he started. <clears throat> and he said, Goja ni kule ugali. Then he came back the next day. <clears throat> After one month, that thing had not moved an inch. And the man came broken and humbled. And he said, Dad, it has not moved. Give me something else. This thing is not working. And then his father said, hold up, hold up, hold up. I want you to look at your biceps. What are you noticing? Which is okay. I can see, yeah. I've become stronger. And his dad said, that is exactly the point. Because I want to remind you, church, you're looking at yourself, but I want to give you good news. You are wiser than you are before. You are smarter than you are before. You are stronger than you are. Count it all joy, saints of hope, church. Whenever you go through trials of difficulties of various kinds, because you know, do you know? Somebody say, I know. That it produces in me something good. Amen. Some of you have learned prayer because of opposition. <laughs> Some of you have learned how to fast and pray. Some of you who have never bound the devil mustered the courage to say, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you have learned spiritual warfare. Why? Because you went through opposition. But it also, like I says, makes us humble. Somebody say humble. You know, if there's one thing I pray for you, church, even as you gather all the joy and psych and motivation to go into 2024, turn to your neighbor, two or three people, tell them, please be humble. Say it as it is. Look at that person, eyeball to eyeball. You, even you guys online, be humble. Tell somebody, be humble. Walk in humility. Let me tell you something. I want, I want you to look at me. It does not matter how handsome or beautiful or gifted or talented you are. It does not matter how powerful you are, how much influence you have or wealth. You will always have people that just don't feel you. Yeah. I jealousy. Oh, ladies, let me go all carnal on you. You may have the butt and the chest and all these things, but I kid you not, there's a man who looks at you and says, Ini, nini, sasa. <laughs> and be oh, jiraniako, humble yourself. Yes, you might be on top of the company. Your poster might even be on the, on, the, on the wall of your company saying employee of the month. But I kid you not, there are people who are saying kakufe kaende uko. Am I saying the truth? Let me tell you, and I want to tell you the truth. You're not the hottest. You're not the fastest. You're not the most gifted. Just humble yourself. Whatever you have is as a result of the living God who has blessed you. Amen. Yes. And sometimes God releases opposition to humble you. How many of you have been humbled this year? Hey, you are, you just raising your hands is an act of humility. Give the Lord a big round of applause. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it brings us closer to God. In prayer and devotion, we have become stronger, wiser. We have become more gentle. And I want to say this, more sympathetic. Hey. How many of you have ever blown up an investment? Huge. You went into a business thinking, oh, Elon Musk has nothing on me. <laughs> muniite. Si muniite is my conference ni wambie. But right now you've declared bankruptcy. You're so humble. Am I saying the truth? And you are what? Sympathetic to those who have failed, just like you have failed. You know, I remember talking to a guy who's a, who once said, Mwanaume anakosaje finje. Tukue ni serious. Finje. Mwanaume anakosa finje. Let me tell you. Mwanaume anakosa kosa finje. Those of you who are sympathetic. Just re, you know you've been there. Just raise up your hand and say. Mwanaume anakosa kosa finje. Amen. Kuna watu hapa. Wengine wajui. But some of you know what I'm talking about. 
where even your ideas do not work. Mpaka yani ushaifika place you are saying just give me anything to do. Nipe anything. I will do it. So the question now here is how should we face opposition? Because I want to tell you guys, I, we are going forward into 2024 by God's grace. We are launching, we are diving, we are <laughs> flying through. Amen. And God is going to be with us. But even if he's going to be with us, our enemies are guaranteed. So I want you to be ready. Somebody say ready. Ask your neighbor for me, are you ready? Are you ready for some haters, for, for, for some firefighters? Uh, for people who will critique you, question you, doubt you, talk about you, uh, mud sling you, gossip you. I don't know if you, are there any ready people here? You know, you know, actually, Seme TV, Mazea Patuni Kegosho, Kegosho. But let me tell you, there is a battle waiting for you in 2024. And my question is, are you ready for that battle? Are you ready? I, I can't hear you, church. Are you ready? Because somebody will say you're not good enough. Are you ready to look up to the Lord and say, Lord, according to them, it is true. I'm not good enough. But according to you, I'm more than enough. I'm worth dying for. Oh, mighty Father, I, I can do all things through you who strengthens me. Amen. Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Hey. Are you ready? Are you ready for what's coming? So, you know, movie lovers like saying winter is coming. I want to tell you opposition is coming. Amen. Opposition is coming. But we have a God. Amen. Who is for us, with us, and who is going to go with us. Hallelujah. So this is how I want us to face opposition. Number one, be vigilant. Amen. Don't just go thinking I'm the most lovable person in the world. Who, who can resist my charm? Nani atakata I propose. Everybody wants to work with me. I mean, you want to work with me? <laughs> Don't carry that mentality. Don't go around thinking you're the chosen one. Oh, ha, I know who I am. Woo. You'll enter a company and you'll be asked, who are you? Who do you think you are? So be vigilant. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 says, be alert and sober-minded. Are you looking through? Are your eyes opened? Number two, I want you to expect it because this same verse continues to say, the enemy, your enemy, pra did you hear that? Whose enemy? Uh, some of you didn't hear. Whose enemy? Is pra looking for who? Someone to devour. Amen. Your enemy, you have an enemy. Be vigilant. Expect it. Even Jesus told us, in this world, you will have trouble. <laughs> the Savior that we are calling to has, de ha has declared. You know the way a prophecy comes, I now declare in your life. I release. The same way he's released breakthrough, he has released trouble. <laughs> I don't want peace. Hey, 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 watch out, watch out. Oh, you want problems? Hey, you want, you, are you sure? <laughs> I'm telling you, the devil will go Nigerian on you. Utakuja hapo menyenyekea by February. Sema, pastor, I surrender. Where? Where? Sema, I want peace. I want peace. Number three, do not be afraid. Paul, when talking about his oppositions, he says, Philippians 1 and verse 28, without being frightened in any way. Hallelujah. Paul was in prison and he taught us when you're there, stop chatting and sending you worship. Hallelujah. Because your help is in there. So do not be afraid. We have not been given a spirit of fear. But number four, endure. Somebody say endure opposition. And do not grow weary. Somebody say stand firm. I want you to stamp your feet in case your neighbor is sleeping. Just stamp your foot and say, stand firm. Yes. I want you to stand firm for your family. Stand firm for your faith. Stand firm for your children. Stand firm for your business. Stand firm for your calling and your purpose. Do not allow the enemy to knock you out. You are given weapons for, for offense and also for defense. Amen. So stand firm. Amen. Hebrews 12 and verse, it says, consider him who endured opposition from sinners. Everywhere where Jesus stand, he met sinners, but he endured till the end. 
You know, we have people in our day who says, I can't. Which I scare your phrase, I can't. Hey, you will. Ambia jirani yako, you will. In fact, Missy Juiki Zungu sana, but tell them you shall. You will. What's happening? Ati, ati, I can't. Ati, umeingia kampuni, oh, tumeomba, umepata breakthrough, umeingia huko, oh, nimeandikiwa barua, me, I can't. Weh, rude yuko ndani. Stand firm. Amen. Whenever your husband says something, kitu kidogo, me ndoa, I can't. Weh, rude yuko ndani. Watch him, chezo. Ati, oh, huu mtoto nimempeleka shule, siju nimempatia nini na huku ni bangi tu. I, I, weh, declare, stand firm. Amen. Pray until you have no more prayers to pray. You know, sometimes I feel like God has given you weapons. You know, and he's just waiting. You know, like, like if you're in, in an army, the, the government has given you a gun to shoot. If you see enemies coming, you can't run to state house again to say, well, we'll say magic constitution, you shoot. <laughs> Buddha, shoot. You are given a gun, shoot. Amen. So when you have weapons of warfare, stand firm and fight. Somebody say fight. Stand firm. Amen. Angalia o jirani wako wa I can't. Mwambia 2024 mambo ni different. Amen. But another one, lest we get very combative. You know, some of you are going to go mortal combat on people and I'm afraid. Nita kuombea ombi. No. You need to love through it. Amen. No matter what opposition you face, never forget you're a child of God. Never lose your soberness. Don't let the bitterness of the enemy make you bitter. Amen. This is why we are told in Luke chapter 6 and verse 27, it says, love who? Your? <laughs> Somebody said 2024 is a year of love. Nana kwambia utawahudhi because as people are writing my status kukuhusu, Mm, some people dot dot dot. What you know who is being addressed? But you know who is being addressed. Where Andika, I will love you anyway. Dot dot dot. <laughs> yes, Amen. When they come at you with hate, you come at them with love. Amen. Because God is love. Amen. But then the other one, and this is the same Ephesians chapter uh, six and verse ten. It says, resist and fight through prayer. So in conclusion here, what we have seen, church, is a very powerful vision that the Lord gave Zechariah. And he's saying to him, I sent enemies against you, but the time has come. I've said, now it's time to bless you. I had sent opposition your way, but now it's time for promotion. Amen. And when we look at these people, we can understand that he is the same God. Hallelujah. And we see scriptures painted across scripture of a God who can help us fight opposition. I want you to remember Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 15. He told him, do not be discouraged because of this vast enemy, because of how strong your opposition is, because why? The battle is the Lord's. That is your word today. Amen. I want you to remember Exodus chapter 14 and verse 14, where Moses was told, the enemies you see today, the opposition you see today, you shall see them no more. And these are prayers that I want us to pray, church. I'm not here to place this prophecy directly to us, but to remind us that there's a God who can engineer and craft a way to bless his people. And we are speaking into our year coming forward, saying we have a God who will fight and deal conclusively with our enemies before us. Amen. And Isaiah 54 reminds us again, that there are people who are fashioning weapons, some who are even going to Tanzania, killing black goats and red hens and all those things, doing things and chanting things against us, but we serve a God who is able to stop them and prepare a table before our very own enemies and he's able to raise us up definitively because he's our God and he promised us and he said, when you come back to me I will come back to you and I will be your God God. Hallelujah. This is why Psalm 28 and verse 7, it says, the Lord is my strength. Who is your strength this day, Hope Church? The Lord is my shield. My heart trusts in him. Thank you so much, Daniel, for leading us. We will not trust in our strength. We will not trust in our skill. We will not trust in our looks. We will not trust in our connections, but we will trust
trust in the name of the Lord. We will trust in our God who is our salvation. Hallelujah. So today I want us to rise up and pray. Psalm 31 and verse 15. That says our times are in God's hands. Amen. I cannot tell you what will happen. God has not given me a prophecy over your life. But he's given me a word to declare to you that our lives are in his hands. Hallelujah. In his loving arms. And whatever plan he has will be fulfilled. Rise up to your feet. Gather your faith. Hallelujah. And let us pray for 2024. Let us pray. Yeah, there's a mounting opposition against this church. And the churches we are yet to plant. There's a mounting opposition against your marriage. Against your children. Against your business. Against your faith. But we are saying here before the Lord that he is our God and our lives are in his hands. Hallelujah. Every mountain shall be removed. Yes. Every mountain shall be removed. Every mountain shall be removed. church I want you to hold that mountain look at that opposition you know what has been opposing you but I also want you to pray for those things that are yet to oppose you to say that God is making a way through this opposition this in prayer before we pray. Yes, it's not be by me. It's not by my Yes. It's not by power but by my spirit says the Lord. It's not by my It's not by my skill. It's not by power. Not by the people that I know. I want you to denounce, dethrone yourself. It's not by my law. It's not by my certificates. It's not by power. my qualifications. It's not by my. It's not by my. Oh, my power. Now begin to pray. This is not the Sunday you keep quiet. I want you to lay down. Say, Lord, I have money in the bank, but it's not going to be by money. Lord, I have a degree. I have qualifications, but it will not be by my degrees. Lord, I have friends. I have connections. I have rich uncles, Lord, but it will not be by them. Lord, this one, this one is as a result of you. so incapable oh God but yet Lord you've put this treasure in jars of clay Lord Jesus we see you using unschooled unqualified untrained people ordinary people Lord 
going through trials. Opposition, Lord. From left, right, and center. Down and up. But Lord God, you have given us this grace. The Lord Jesus, you are with us. And what we see, my Father God, as opposition shall be an opportunity for us to give you glory because it's coming down. Right now, I want you to pray a prayer of warfare. Some of you have never talked to the devil or talked to demons or talked to any principality lodged against you. But right now, I want you to launch out in warfare and say, devil, not my church. Devil, not my house, not my child, not my marriage, not my business. You gates, be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not fear. I will not be discouraged. I will not throw in the towel. I will not give up. I will stand by his grace. I will stand. Instead of falling, I will stand. Instead of running away, I will chase after God. I will stand because he who began a good work in me is faithful. Hallelujah. He will do great things. He will do great things. Mm. He will do great things. Bless his home. We're going to do a mashup here. Just give me a different key. God will away where there seems to be no way he works in ways we cannot see he will make a way for me he will be my God hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way Give God a big round of applause. Yes, through the desert He will make a way. Hallelujah. Through the wilderness He will make a way. Through the sea He will lift me up, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When the oceans rise, and thunders roll I will so with you above the storm Father you are king over the flood I will sing I will be king yes. No you are God I will
much, church. I want you to listen. Some people crossing into 2024 are putting on degrees and connections and their wit and their ujanja and their motivation and they are stepping out. But we don't trust in chariots or horses. Our trust is in the name of the Lord. So today I want you to put on a different outfit because there is a soul looking at a, at a Goliath and he's telling you put your qualifications, put together your connections, put together your wit. But I want you like David to say these clothes don't look good on me because I come at my enemy not with armor but I come at my enemy in the name of the living God. So I'm going to dress myself with the full armor of God. I have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, and the shield of faith. I'm saying, come at me, and I'm coming at you. Oh, hallelujah. Give him praise. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Woo. The oceans rise and thunder roar. I will so be you above the storm. Father, you are king over. Somebody, somebody say overflow, overflow. Don't be shy. I know you've, you've, you've never seen a breakthrough in 2023, but God is saying overflow. You come back to me, and I'm coming back to you. Somebody say overflow. Hallelujah. Say overflow. Hallelujah. God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want you to be bold enough to say I'm blessed, I'm favored, the Lord loves me, he called me, I'm his own. I want you to speak on yourself, speak for yourself, lay hands on yourself and say, Father, I'm not abandoned, I am loved by God, he's for me. Hallelujah. God is good, hallelujah. You, you have been beat up so hard by this year that you're even afraid to dream but God is saying overflow he's saying I'm jealous for you if you only knew that's why Paul prayed and he says I pray that your the eyes of your understanding may be opened some of you have no idea how loved you are how cared for you are hallelujah lift him up you know, I want us to declare this. Pardon me, I, I cry a lot, but it's okay. I'd rather cry, cry in the presence of the Lord. There's a song we sang when we opened this year. That God is our Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Waenda nasi, oh, waenda nasi, oh, waenda nasi, ni asante. Waenda nasi, oh. to step forward because you faced opposition. Hey. Like Moses, when you stand at the edge of the beach and the waters, 
Remember that if God is with you, yeah. He has the ability to part the waters for you. Hallelujah. And this, this hurdle will be the end of your enemies behind you. Because as they come for you, they are not moving with the Lord. Therefore, they shall be buried in the water. So let them come, baby, come. Because the Lord is with me. I can walk through the seas, walk through the wilderness. Oh, I end an army. The Asante. Why end an army? Why end an army? says he looked up that's why David says where does my help come I look to the hills that's where my help comes from look up may the Lord show you may the Lord open your eyes to see may you have spiritual understanding insight to know that God is going with you and he will empower you have no fear church May the Lord bless you. Turn his face towards you. Remind you that now that you've come back to me, I've come back to you. Yes, I'm bringing a measuring line. We are going to redesign your inheritance. I'm stretching the boundaries of your inheritance. Somebody say hallelujah. So right now as we leave, I know you guys are going to go for, um, you know, crossover parties. But it's a song I, I, I really loved in the worship set today to Meshinda. Amen. I would ask that we close with that song because I want you to walk out of this place a victor. Because we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. <laughs> 